found one right there, just hanging out. But I don't know if it's nervous. Hello, this video is sponsored by BritBox, the premier streaming service for Britain's most beloved TV shows. I'm Lawrence and I'm on a quest to uncover all of the memos that Britain and America lost in the pond and one of those memos pertains to insects, specifically insects that glow in the dark. Here in the Midwest there is a type of winged insect that during my first American summer caused my eyes to do this and my mouth to do likewise. Oh, I'm falling. Don't. What the heck was that? I asked my American wife. Oh, just a lightning bug, she said nonchalantly, as if she'd witnessed this act of sheer sorcery so many times it had now become old hat. I see, said I. So do all of your insects just flash on and off for no reason? It was only later, after being treated to more of this unrelenting witchcraft, that I realised there was in fact a very good reason for it. And before I get into all that, if you're new to my channel and haven't had a chance to subscribe, do that now! As long as I live, I'll forever associate Midwestern summer evenings with the sound of crickets and the bioluminescence of lightning bugs. But what if I told you that both phenomena exist not to grab the attention of humans, but that of a fellow mate? Of course, when I say mate, I don't mean that in the British sense of friend. I mean a partner with whom you can perform a bit of how's your father. Just as male crickets stridulate to win the affection of female crickets, male lightning bugs flash brightly to let the ladies know they be single. If she likes what she sees, the female will send a flash back, sort of like the insect equivalent of swiping right. When it comes to the Photinus paralis, America's common eastern lightning bug, the female will often hold conversations with several males in a single evening, leading the latter group to get jealous and beat each other up. But during courtship, the male and female continue to twinkle at each other until they meet, fall in love, and produce up to 500 eggs! Sorry for going high-pitched. So now, whenever I see these dazzling creatures waltzing in the nighttime air, I feel both honoured and ever so slightly violated. But the US is a huge place. Not everywhere in this giant land experiences the same density of lightning bugs. Though there are plenty of them here in the Midwest, there's an even higher concentration of them in the South, while the West Coast barely has them at all. In fact, to the extent that they are found out west, Americans can't seem to decide what to call them. In the west and upper midwest, lightning bug usually becomes firefly, which makes you wonder, do people in my neck of the woods refer to Firefly the TV show as lightning bug? And while we're on the subject of TV shows and things that were lost in the pond, what do this NASA space shuttle and Britain's Inspector Morse have in common? Easy, the space shuttle Endeavour and Endeavour Morse were both named after Captain Cook's famous ship. And notice how NASA even kept the O-U-R spelling. Perhaps that's a story for another time. But the universe of Inspector Morse represents stories from my time. As the late great John Thor solves mysteries in a show the Radio Times called the greatest British crime drama of all time. Thanks to BritBox, you can see it for yourselves, not to mention its highly acclaimed spin-off, Lewis. Starring Kevin Whateley reprising his role as Lewis, the show is a more than worthy sequel to Morse. In addition to this, you can stream your other favourite British shows via your smartphone, tablet, desktop, Chromecast, Apple TV or Roku device, as well as LG and Samsung smart TVs. Head to BritBox.com slash LostInThePond and use the promo code LostInThePond when signing up for a monthly subscription and you'll get 50% off your first month. The link is also in my description below. So far in this video I might have given you the impression that we don't have fireflies in Britain. But it turns out, much to my own surprise, we do. Sort of. There is a species in Britain and throughout much of Europe called the common glowworm that, for all intents and purposes, is the same f thing. It's tiny, only comes out at night and flashes in the dark when it wants some hanky-panky and yes I'm still talking about glowworms. The thing is, they must be much harder to track down back home because, like most Brits, I never actually saw one with my own eyeballs. But that's okay because Britain has hedgehogs and America doesn't, so we're even. Anyway, at this point in the video I'd like to address the elephant in the room, which is this. Whether we call them lightning bugs, fireflies or glowworms, each and every one of us is completely and utterly a little bit incorrect. 
because these creatures are not flies or bugs or worms. They are beetles. And I don't mean that they came from Liverpool and wrote songs about love and walruses. I mean that they belong to the same subgroup as ladybugs, or as we call them in Britain, ladybirds. Likewise, these are neither bugs nor birds, but also beetles, and occasionally America's first lady. And finally, I thought I'd take you outside into my backyard and show you my own congregation of fireflies, and I thought I'd whisper it so that we don't scare them. I suppose they're not really frightened by that, are they? I'm really doing it because David Attenborough does it. I've set up here because I had seen fireflies flying around that stake in the ground, which must mean that they have a stake in the ground. That joke made no sense. And so far, since I've set up my camera, I haven't seen a single firefly. And so at this point, I thought the best way to remedy that would be to grab my camera phone and go for a little wander. I sometimes see lightning bugs just flashing around these trees, which is sort of the lightning bug equivalent of doing it behind the bike sheds. But tonight, no such luck. Oh, there's one. Oh, did you see it? You see it? Even so, that fleeting grainy footage didn't seem like it would be enough to satisfy my wonderful subscribers and Uncle Toby. With all hope seemingly lost and my desire for a cheeseburger growing stronger by the second, I was about to give up when I saw a bright flash on the other side of the garden. I don't know if it's nervous, because it's not flashing at me. Oh, it did. Did you see that? Did you see that? Thank you, little friend. Thank you for providing me with box office footage. If it wasn't true before tonight, the events of this video have firmly cemented America's Common Eastern Firefly as my absolute favourite of all Beatles, and that includes George Harrison. If you ever have a bad day, if you ever find yourself stuck in a rut, if you just need something to remind you that occasionally this world is a majestic and surprising place, go outside on a warm summer's evening and find yourself one of these. Watch it, up close, for ten minutes. And every time that it lights up, think to yourself again and again how profoundly insane it is that it does that. And then remember that deep down you have that power too. Because I've no idea where I'm going with this. I was just going to say something about finding the light with inside themselves, but I mean, they are subscribed to my channel, so there's honestly no hope for them. That said, if you happen to live in a part of the world that isn't a hot spot for firefly hookups, but would still like to get inspired, I recommend re-watching this video from now until the end of time. In the meantime, that's it for this video. I'm Lawrence Brown. You can follow me on threads and or Twitter. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel so that I don't have to. If you like learning about things with wings that sing and occasionally hang out in my back garden, watch this video next. And finally, a big thank you to my ponderers who make these videos possible. They even paid for the light bugs. If you would like to become a ponderer and gain access to my secret video series, Diary of a YouTube Sensation, you can do so today by clicking the join button below or by becoming a patron at patreon.com slash lostinthepond. Until the next video, goodbye.